Honorable Prime Minister of St. Martin, Silveri Jacobs, National Disaster Coordinator and Fire Chief, Clive Richardson, ESF-1 Coordinator, Kenrick Chittick, ESF-5 Coordinator, Chief of Police, Carl John, ESF-6 Coordinator and Head of Public Health, Fena Arnell, ESF-10 Coordinator and Secretary General of the Ministry of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport and Telecommunication, Miguel De Weaver, ESF-7 Member and Head of Community Development, Family and Humanitarian Affairs, Ms. Chantal Grunewald, Dr. Earl Bess, Inspector General of the Ministry of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Rolika Roach of the Department of Communication and on behalf of the Prime Minister and Chair of the Emergency Operations Center, the Prime Minister Silvera Jacobs, I welcome you to this virtual EOC press conference with regards to the state of affairs surrounding COVID-19. For more on this subject, I would like to invite the Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Silvera Jacobs, to address you. Prime Minister, you have the floor. Prime Minister, can you kindly unmute your mic? You have the floor. Thank you. It froze on my end for a minute. Uh, good afternoon, people of St. Martin. I come to you this afternoon as Prime Minister and Chair of the EOC in this press conference of the EOC for today, May 1st, 2020. As we continue to in, in, uh, inform the general community of St. Martin pertaining to the latest developments and co our government's COVID-19 containment, mitigation and response measures. I thank you, Rolaika, and I welcome the EOC panel here with me this afternoon as we have just recently concluded our meeting, a full EOC meeting with all coordinators, including the Ministry of ECYS, represented by SG uh, Shermina Powell Richardson. Key ESF coordinators for this particular disaster, as you may already know, are ESF 5, the Police Department and Justice Chain, ESF 6, the Health. Ministry represented by Public Health and CPS, as well as in this case, our Inspector General, Dr. Best. We have ESF 7, also from Ministry of VSA, Social Affairs and Community Development represented here, as was already introduced by Ms. Chantal George Kroonewelt, and ESF 10, uh, represented by SG Tiat uh, Miguel de Weaver. Also with us is ESF-1, representing GEBE, which is pertinent to today's discussion. The general points I would like to update you on are that during the EOC meeting, we had updates from all ESF coordinators on the proposed, as well as their take on the proposed decision points. The ESF coordinators provided assessments of the measures already in place, and based on the assessments and feedback received, a decision was taken or several decisions were taken to adjust the guidelines slightly in place for the efficiency of everyone, such as allowing more time for seniors to access essential business during the three opening days. It was also decided to allow persons the opportunity to do exercise on the public roads within their districts during an allotted time in the morning from 6 to 8 a.m. and in the evening from 4 to 6 p.m. So only on the days whereby you're allowed to move in general, and that is within your district. That includes walking, jogging, and cycling. Of course, with the measures in place that proper social distancing takes place, whether you are in the same family or not, so one and a half to two meter distance, preferably two, and these adjustments will go into place once the new addendum stipulating these guidelines have been vetted and published. We are, as government, aiming to have this done by tomorrow, May 2nd, 2020. Because this is and remains a public health crisis, emphasis is on the health perspective. As such, it is for that reason that the EOC also decided to establish a group, a working group comp uh, comprising of ESFs 4, 5, 6, and 10, which are to provide recommendations on further de-escalation measures moving forward and based on guidelines that they will develop for implementation by entities that can or will open up in the future. This work group will also ensure that the actual implementation of the guidelines 
can take place effect efficiently and effectively by said entities. This will, of course, require collaboration and cooperation across ministries and ESFs, and I look forward to getting those recommendations by Wednesday or Thursday next week. Additionally, I would like to inform that based on the assessment within the EOC of the current measures and the compliance by the general public, it was decided that the state of emergency will be extended by one week, which would lead us into May 17, 2020. This is especially based on the proposal by ESF 6, which is the health sector, which we must focus on so that they can do their work. We are, and if you are following our press conferences through the week, would have noted that even the Samaritan Medical Center has noted a drop in admissions, and that is indeed a good sign that the state of emergency is um, getting the results that we want, but we must see it for a sustained period in order to really feel that the curve has been flattened. So we need a little more time to be able to say that with certainty. As such, the necessary national decree will be prepared this week and be made ready for this extension. Further to that, the EOC members were reminded today to adjust their COVID-19 plans, taking the hurricane season into consideration, and this will be discussed further next week. Some adjustments will have to be made to the addendum of the ministerial regulation recently published for efficiency purposes pertaining, as I mentioned earlier, to senior citizens, which will be allowed to have more specific times, as we would like to ensure that they are not getting in too much contact with the rest of the community. Seeing the upheaval that we saw over the past days at GEBE, they will also be adjusting how they are operating during the course of next week and moving forward, and we'll update you on this once their turn comes up. Any adjustments to the... Oh yes, also discussed within the EOC today was the upgrading and policy development necessary for future uh, reality of our COVID-19 situation on governmental level. That means any legislation and policy as we move into our recovery period has to be properly planned out from now, and that is being worked on within the ministries, of course, with the assistance of the ministers involved and their cabinets. We will begin sensitizing the respective ministers on the key areas that they have um, encountered during this COVID-19 crisis that will be needed to be adapted so that we can um, move forward conscientiously, taking public health as a major concern moving forward and improving not only that, but the way we do service in St. Martin. As I've said before, we must get used to our new reality. Delivery is the way to go. And all those who are requesting and asking to be able to be opened must be prepared to face that new reality. All this time off has given us ample time to plan and prepare for that. And I look forward to seeing all those entities requesting uh, permission to open, putting in place all the measures that have already been published, and then of course, having them vetted by our task force, which has been established yesterday. I thank you for your attention thus far, Rolaika, and allow you to now pass the word to our uh, panelists. Thank you, Prime Minister, for your opening remarks. At this time, I would like to invite ESF 6 Coordinator and Head of Public Health, Ms. Fanar Nelto Jassi. Fanar, you have the floor. Good afternoon, Rolaika. I'll start with the latest statistics of yesterday, April 30th, and they are as follows. Um, in self-quarantine, we have 145 persons, 104 in self-isolation. The number that are hospitalized right now, up until yesterday, was seven. The number tested was 329. The number positive, 76. Number negative, 251. Number pending tests, one. One inconclusive test, 13 deceased, 44 recovered, and 19 active cases. To give an update on the community outreach program, to date, a total of 654 households consisting of 1,185 persons have been approached and provided information and asked if they were expecting any, experiencing, sorry, any signs and symptoms. 16 persons indicated that they were experiencing symptoms. 10 of these persons were tested. One person 
uh, sorry, on an on follow up, the rest of the persons indicated later on that they were not feeling any signs and symptoms, and one of them didn't want to be tested. One of those persons from this group tested positive for COVID-19. In line with the recommendations of RIVM and WHO, ESF6 has advised the EOC that the following prerequisites must be in place prior to lifting or continued relaxation of the current lockdown. Two areas that are very much of importance are we must ensure that there's a reliable downward trend of number of confirmed cases, and we must ensure that adherence to measures are a compliance of the of the population is 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 met. Um, so the reliable downward trend of number of confirmed cases in order to reach that, we must have sufficient testing capacity. We must ensure that adequate monitoring system is in place so that we can monitor potential increase of cases on a continuous basis. We must lower the threshold for testing by adjusting the case definition, which we did. We must also strengthen the public health capacity. We must strengthen the capacity to model locally for COVID-19. And we must increase the curative care capacity to handle an increase of COVID-19 cases. Adherence to the measures should be in ensuring that physical distancing of at least two meters on the streets and in public places is adhered to. We must try our best to ensure that persons stay at home as much as possible. We must ensure that wearing masks in public is maintained and that organizations, taking, that organizations are taking the appropriate measures to ensure that their clients or customers meet, these, meet the, the guidelines. We must also ensure that the country has an ability to swiftly take additional measures when the number of cases rise. With the above in mind, ESF-6, along with other essential ESF, ESF, ESFs, sorry, will continue to develop and update the already established guidelines for businesses to ensure a reop that the reopening ensure a reopening that promotes or secures the possibility for their clients to practice safe behavior, preventing a, a potential spread. Our local lab has also secured sufficient testing kits to guarantee local testing with a turnaround time of one day. It is therefore no longer necessary to send tests to Guadeloupe. Our recruitment process has started to structurally strengthen the public health capacity. Support am amidst the COVID pandemic will soon have to be replaced and, with, and as such, interviews have been had with several professionals who have indicated an interest in working at CPS and the Public Health Department. In addition to all of this, ESF-6 has commenced its hurricane pre preparedness process this week. As such, a meeting scheduled to take place with SMMC specifically to identify their specific needs as it pertains to the COVID-19 dedicated areas that were temporarily placed outside the facility. In closing, we have seen many businesses coming forward requesting to support our frontline workers and government in various ways. I would like to take this opportunity to public th publicly thank each and every one of you. Thank you, Ralaika. Thank you, Fena, for your opening remarks. At this time, I would like to invite ESF7 member and head of community development, family and humanitarian affairs, responsible for distribution, Mrs. Chantal George Hunevelt. You have the floor. Can you kindly unmute your mic, Chantal? Good afternoon, Ms. Roach. Good afternoon to the populace of St. Martin. Good afternoon, head of EOC and Prime Minister Ms. Silvira Jacobs and to the panelists. I am more than happy to inform you of the ongoing distribution that is presently taking place in the LPQ districts. A total of 355 boxes will be distributed today to the various neighborhoods, such as Dutch Quarter, um, Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden, Nazareth, Madam Estate, Middle Region. And so far, everything has been going well. The only challenge that we are being faced with is persons are not at home. I am encouraging persons, especially because we are on lockdown today, and the days that we are on lockdown, to be at home because um, prior to distributing the boxes, we will call the beneficiaries to find out if they are there 
in order for us to distribute the box. However, if they are not there, then we will go to a other person who is then identified as um, most vulnerable. I have heard many times uh, people called me on various occasions mentioning that they did not receive a box and they saw or heard that um, distribution did take place in their neighborhood. However, because they were not at home, they did not receive the box. So therefore, especially recognizing that the demand for the boxes are more than the amount of boxes that we have. If you know that you are in, in need, please be at home to receive your box. I will write about now, we would like to continue encouraging all companies, all companies in, in, on St. Martin to assist, to donate whatever they can so that we will be able to make more food boxes to provide to the most vulnerable on, on St. Martin. I would also like to applaud all the volunteers, the community councils, the um, police ESF5 who have been working with us. The, we are working collaboratively and so far it's going well. And all I could say is together, together as a community, we can make this happen. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Thank you, Mrs. George Hunovel, for your opening remarks. At this time, I would like to invite ESF One Coordinator and CEO of NVGEBE, Mr. Ken Richitik. You have the floor. Good afternoon, Kim, Ms. Jacobs. Good afternoon, Ms. Roach. Good ESF Coordinator. Good afternoon. To the media, good afternoon. This is Robert Good afternoon. Last week, Wednesday and Thursday, when we opened the office, we were pleasantly surprised that a lot of uh, persons in the Caribbean long before the reopened office. From 6 p.m., there were approximately 80 to 90 persons that came to open. We had a plan in place for numbering system, issued numbers to all our customers, which we did. But the early part of the morning, there was a large flock of persons coming to the office, and that played a different uh, not in that situation whereby there was not much social distancing, but management and employees came together to try to control this. We also had at the end, the police officers was also present to assist with our cloud. We managed to get it under control within a short time, and it went pretty well. The following day, we took some measures. We had a side street closed off in the event. I must make a Customers. But, um, it is know that we inform all customers that we are not expecting anyone. It is not to rush to be all there at the same time for the open in the morning. It is good to time enough to pay a bill. Going forward, we would like to um, have on Monday, Wednesday, for all seniors to be able to pay a bill. And also on, uh, on Friday, we also have uh, to be able to do So Monday, Wednesday and Friday, we have um, the seniors and frontliners on Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chitik, for your opening remarks. I would like to do, however, mention, Mr. Chitik, unfortunately, a lot was not heard based on, I think, your mic. Um, is there any way maybe that we can get you with a pair of headphones that we can probably get you to do your opening remarks over? Because we're getting a lot of um, feedback that the audio was not heard for this segment. So I don't know if you can probably get some assistance and then we can come back to you to have that rectified. Right now, I'm in the office, and I have four of my at this point in time. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, and I guess we'll just have to move to the next person um, at this point. I would now like to invite ESF 10 coordinator and secretary general of the Ministry of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport and Telecommunication, Mr. Miguel De Weaver. SG De Weaver, you have the floor. 
Good afternoon. Thank you, Walaika, and uh, wishing all a, a happy uh, Labor Day. Um, the Ministry of TIAP is in discussions regarding the conditions of their for allowance of bus transportation with our colleagues of the Ministry of Public Health. Thereafter, we will be discussing the conditions with the Bus Drivers Association with the hope that we will arrive at an agreement regarding the conditions that they would have to adhere and comply with in order to provide bus service to the public. Once this is completed and agreed upon with the Bus Association, the Honorable Prime Minister will inform the public. Additionally, today I come not with much updates, but I come with an appeal from the course of developments within our, with our community as it relates to gradual and phased returning and opening of our economy and businesses. When we reflect upon the long lines and large gatherings of persons to go to the bank to pay their GB, TELM or UTS, we immediately, recognize, we immediately recognize that there's an extra need to convince our population to use more online and internet banking. We know that these businesses have been encouraging their customers to sign up and use more onla online banking as well. We also understand that Many have decided or prefer not to use or even don't trust online services and or internet banking. However, I am convinced that if you try it and see how easy and efficient it is, you will probably and most likely never go back in those lines unless you have to. I urge you to ask your son, your daughter, family member, or a trusted friend, or even the institutions themselves they will gladly facilitate you because they too want you to use more online services. Take a few minutes during this time of the shutdown and visit the various sites of the banks, GB and or tell them. Just read, click and follow how and what you have to do to sign up for online services. We are also cognizant of the fact that you're going to that, that the fact that going to town and visiting these institutions, visiting these institutions for some people, it may be an outing. However, at these times, your health, and especially those of the elderly, is the most important factor. Socializing can also be done with video chats on your phone as well. Create or let someone add you to the, a family group chat or a group of friends. Again, we ask that you ask your children or your child, or for your children to assist and encourage their parents, or for children or to assist and encourage their parents to become familiar with the joy of being connected on the various platforms of communication and even social media. Now that a decision has been made to allow for persons to exercise, this is also an opportunity to stroll and get some fresh breeze, uh, exercise and possibly even see persons from a distance when passing. With respect to the businesses, we have appealed and are, and are in discussions with various businesses to encourage them to pursue delivery, as the Prime Minister mentioned, and online shopping. This will most likely become a favorite way of customers, as they and we are like convenience. And given the risk and uncertainty of COVID-19 health concerns, we need to commence the process at looking and using innovative methods to business. The more the business leads, the consumers will follow. The more options you provide to consumers, the more potential opportunities the businesses have. Naturally depends on the type of business, but we certainly encourage persons and businesses to not only limit themselves to St. Martin, but offer your goods and services to the world. In these times of social distancing, and possibly this being quote unquote, the new norm, it is imperative that bringing money via these means is also highly encouraged. And I thank you. Thank you, SG De Weaver, for your opening remarks. I would now like to invite ESF 5 Coordinator, Chief of Police, Chief Carl John, to address you. Chief John, you have the floor. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you, uh, Laika. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, wish all workers, and especially uh, essential workers, a happy Labor Day, and um, wish them much strength during these difficult times. Next to that also, I would like to thank uh, the corporate citizens that are supporting ESF-5 by providing PPEs. Uh, to give an update of the past week, um, we are still seeing more or less 80% compliance with the measures. 
Um, but what is worrisome that the group that is not complying are engaging in criminal activity or breaking the measures. Um, we all know the example of the illegal jump up. We have a lot of people who are um, rendering threats online. So those are the things that we are really busy investigating the past weeks. Next to that, we have seen a spike again in stolen vehicles. Um, as everyone knows, we are working very closely with our French counterparts to try to curb this. Um, just the last few days, we are, have already confiscated three stolen vehicles on the Dutch side. But when I see the numbers of how many vehicles are stolen, even during the lockdown, it is worrisome. Um, the police have also confiscated four firearms within the month of April, and this is within the lockdown. And um, that's why we actually have strengthened um, forces. We have more manpower from the KMR, and if we um, see also there is more military on the island because criminal activity has not stopped and we are seeing spike in different areas. What we are also seeing is that on the domestic front, there is a lot of um, calls for assistance, and that does not correlate with the amount of um, uh, official complaints that are really made. So we are still advising and encouraging all those who um, are victims of domestic violence to please come out, make the complaints, there is help for you. We will help you, definitely. I want to also advise the general public, even though here and there movement is allowed, um, try to limit it to essential movement. Thank you, Rolak. Thank you, Chief John, for your opener remarks. If you've just joined us, you are watching the virtual EOC press conference. Thank you for joining us. We now move on to the question and answer session. But before I do that, I would like to also remind the media that the National Disaster Coordinator, Chief Clive Richardson, Fire Chief Clive Richardson, is also available to answer any questions, as well as Dr. Earl Best, the Inspector General of the Ministry of VSA. The floor is open. Lyndon Brown of BCN TV, you have the floor. Lyndon, can you kindly unmute your mic? Lyndon, you have the floor. Okay, seems Lyndon may be experiencing some technical difficulties. I'll move on. BB Shaw of SMN News, you have the floor. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to the panel. Um, Rolika, can you tell me if Mr. Chetik is able to hear and answer so that I can at least hear him if I pose questions okay. to him? Yes, Mr. Chetik is nodding his head. That indicates that he can hear you. So we will try again to see if um, we can better get, we have better um, signal with him. So go ahead and post your question and we'll see how it goes. All right, Mr. Chetik, um, prior to the opening of GEBE for people to pay bills, did GEBE, EBE uh, make any effort to enhance their online payment. Um, there are a number of people, even people on the panel, I should say, that have experienced um, paying their bills. It's not processed by GEBE and before the lockdown, they were disconnected. Um, and then why is it the GEBE did not um, maybe uh, accept payment from districts or by zones rather than having this large amount of people uh, flocking G G G B E, and then you have no control of how they enhance their online payments when people pay online, like Miguel de Weaver is calling on people to use online banking services. Well, this is one of the hiccup, and you know, I, I want to know if this was ever enhanced. And then why not in district or in zones? Thank you, BB. Mr. Chitik, you have the floor. 
Thank you, baby, for your question. LVG will be asking our, our customers over the last years to sign up for online payments. It is so convenient and so easy to be done. Everybody can pay your payments from within your home. You can go to LVG website, it's nvg.com, and go to my account, and you can sign up by insert information, and you can pay from all local banks. Um, I, I don't joy. think he understand my question. Hold on, BB. Let's let Mr. Chete continue. Mr. Chete? We have, we have been facing some kinds of concerns for the number of residents that are those who don't have a bank account and go to online banking. What I've noticed in the last few um, weeks, the online payment clients have increased a great number since um, before COVID, um, the COVID pandemic. We are also not disrespect anyone. Long before, in the month of March, early March, we decided we were not disrespecting the clients. There are some persons who probably were disrespecting before the, uh, the COVID that we decided to disconnect that were not connected back. However, those clients probably have um, other issues related before the COVID, which could have been set up with GB. Once they come into GB, we have a customer service department. It will be corrected if that is connected. We have over a month for sure not connecting you one. In terms of um, the payment district, the way our system is set up in GB for our customers it is not by district. We use road numbers, and the road numbers doesn't say anything to our customers. But right now, looking at um, our software system to download our clients. And see how best we can sort them out to make a better plan going forward. And that's what we chose to have next week for seniors and for like customers to pay next week. That's what we need to control right now. In the meantime, they give us time to make a better plan so we can sort the, our customers in public alphabetical order or by right numbers or district, etc. The thing is, um, I get a lot of um, suggestions as well too open more branch offices. It's not that easy. We are talking about safety for our employees with cash. We also look at um, our software system not set up that can have it anywhere. At this point in time, we look to see how best we can uh, move forward in the future with um, what you call prepaid payment by different stations. That was being worked on before, but until we get it finalized, we have to uh, find ways to mitigate this situation right now here. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chitik. Thank you, BB, for that question. We now move on to Stephen Cerulean of PJD2 Radio. You have the floor. Stephen, can you unmute your mic? Roach, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, Stephen, you have the floor. And a very happy um, Labor Day to all, including my colleagues. My question is for Ms. Anel Fenner, um, as it pertains to, well, the Prime Minister last week or this week earlier on stated that um, the testing will be ramped up. Um, my question to her is how many persons um, is CPS looking forward to testing during this period? Uh, and secondly, how can one wanting to be tested go about the process? Thank you for that question, Stephen. Um, anyone who needs to be who wants to be tested and is showing signs and symptoms can con contact their family physician or call 914 CPS and they will be tested. Once experiencing signs and symptoms, contact your physician contact CPS and you will be tested. Well, or your, your physician will contact CPS and you will be tested. Mm -hmm. The aim is to get everyone who are experiencing signs and symptoms to come forward so that they can be tested and we can finally flatten the curve. There's no, there's no maximum set by CPS at this point in time as to how much persons that they, um, that they, were, that they are willing to test. They want to test everyone.
Um, we're currently, I think Miss Arnell is experiencing some technical difficulties and she may have been disconnected. Um, let's just give it a moment or two more and then we will have to move on and have her come back and answer that question once again. Okay. Steven, when um, Fena gets reconnected, she'll have to uh, continue answering the question for you. I would li now like to invite Andrew Dick of TV Carib to pose his question. Andrew, you have the floor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to the EOC and also the Prime Minister and the public. Message to the, just not message, but I would say question to the Prime Minister. The question has to do with um, the, the work group within EOC. Uh, just wanted to know um, how was that established exactly and for how long will that work group uh, operate? Thank you, Andrew. Um, the work group yesterday in our uh, strategic ESF 5, 6, 7, 9, and 10 meeting, um, we were discussing de escalation measures and seeing that um, even after lengthy discussions, we had entities that were opening that were having serious challenges uh, maintaining the measures or not anticipating the crowds, etc. And even though with each opening of a new segment, we see that the crowds last during the first part of the day, and then by the afternoon it's over. This is one of the reasons why the Windward Island Bank actually um, doesn't open until three anymore, because when they were open until three by midday, there would be a rush from eight to 11, and then between 11 and 12, it would slack off and there would be nobody else for the afternoon. So they opted to go also until midday. Um, now that it's Montana, of course, there may be more persons. It might be an issue, but the behavior of all people is such that we like to rush out in the early part of the day and therefore we end up with these long, long lines. So we would like to encourage the general population to adjust your behavior also. If the place is going to be open all day, know that a majority of people will go in the first couple hours. And that's why we also extended the hours for the senior citizens. But the group that has to, um, they are part of the inspectorate anyway, um, TIAT, VSA, and um, including Vrami, but Vrami isn't necessarily part of the, the case, the, what did I call it? The task force. We need set guidelines, so besides what is publicized, the guidelines that the businesses will have to have in place prior to even the announcement that they could open. So when we made announcements in the past, it was with the assumption that um, based on what has been presented, that everything is in place to ensure proper social distancing, sanitization, et cetera, et cetera, would take place. Prior to the lockdown, we had a limit as to how many people could congregate. And we saw that prior to the lockdown where the banks took several measures. Any and all persons planning to reopen, awaiting the announcement, must make sure that these are in place, submitted to the Ministry of TIAT, so that it can be vetted by the task force before we will even, as an EOC, decide that they can open. That is the thing. And that's why public transportation was not allowed to open this week because we cannot ascertain today that they are ready in terms of all of the measures that would be required. So during the week, once the um, committee or the task force has vetted that all is his and the operators know exactly what is expected of them, etc., then we will then take the decision to allow them or not. So basically the task force has just been set up. They are going to put all the guidelines that have already been established into a working document and carry out inspections prior to allowing these businesses, et cetera, to open. But again, I encourage businesses to start their deliveries. And anyone requesting to carry out deliveries that has not yet been done should send a request um, through to me as chair of the EOC, and this will be decided upon moving forward after being vetted by the committee. Thank you, Andrew. 
Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Angie, for that question. I would now like to return to Ms. Fena Arnell, who has rejoined the EOC press conference to continue answering her question to Stephen Cerulean. Fena, you have the floor. Well, Laika, I can't hear well, but I, I'm thinking you're telling me that I have the floor to respond to Stephen Cerulean? Yes, Fena. Okay. Um, Stephen, your question was pertaining to CPS's um, how many persons that they, ex that they had anticipated to test? Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, CPS does not have a cap of amount of persons that they anticipate to test. Their intention is to test everyone that is feeling any types of signs and symptoms. So anyone that experienced signs and symptoms, you're requested to please, please, please contact your family physician who will contact C CPS or call 914 and you will be contacted to be tested. I do not remember the second half of your question, Mr. Cerulean. Well, basically it was, uh, it had a lot to do with uh, the Prime Minister um, stated earlier this week, the fact that um, um, CPS will be um, ramping up testing. Um, do I take it that uh, you will be testing a lot more persons as time goes by? And if so, how has that period been coming along in the various districts that testing has been conducted? Or okay. has been conducted? So the intention was in the, is indeed, still is indeed, to ramp up testing so that we can get a better overview, a better idea, and to actually um, flatten this curve. And the community outreach program was aimed at this. And as I stated in, the, in my opening remarks, a total of 654 households has been visited thus far, of which 1,185 persons have been approached and provided information. And they were also asked if they were experiencing any signs and symptoms. From this outreach program, we have thus far met, only received information from 16 persons. It is our intention to continue this outreach program to ensure that we can reach more people so that those persons can also come forward and be tested. Of this group that has been tested from the community outreach program thus far, one person has tested positive COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Arnell, for your response. Thank you, Stephen, for that question. We now move on to Jeffrey Sokran of Island 92 Radio. You have the floor. Thank you, uh, Rolaika, and good afternoon and happy Labor Day to uh, to everyone who's here. The uh, the first uh, the first question I have for today, I think, really kind of stems across the business community, whether it's restaurants, whether it's non-government construction, whether it's the hotels. People are kind of wondering. Business owners are wondering, kind of what the plan is. When do we expect? you know, when, is there some sort of guidelines as to when people can start to think about they can reopen, um, you know, restaurants want to know, you know, they, restaurateurs are, are saying, you know, don't tell us tomorrow that we can reopen. We've got prep we have to do. We have to bring staff in. We have to go shopping for food, um, that kind of stuff. Um, construction, same thing. Um, similar, similar types of planning is required. For the hotels, I know for all the hoteliers, the questions always send to center around, you know, when do we think the airport might reopen so we can start to deal with future reservations that are coming in on our on our uh, 800 uh, line uh, telephone calls? You know, how do, is there any kind of guidance that we can give in terms of the staged reopening plan uh, to the general community? And maybe that's okay. Thank you for that question. Oh, Miguel? Okay, go ahead, Miguel. Okay. Um, thank you for the question. Um, I think um, two things. One, uh, the work group uh, task force that the Prime Minister is uh, mentioned is exactly um, the, the team that is going to be looking at specifically all of the terms and conditions under which the reopening can be done in a safe and efficient way. Um, of course, as TIAT, we are also talking to 
the airlines, the ports of entry, the, the harbor and the, air, um, the harbor and the airport regarding what those um, conditions will be, because naturally the country itself um, has to be in a position where we have uh, hopefully COVID free or have it under uh, control. And then certainly it depends on uh, how the other countries that we are depending to get our visitors from, because naturally that's where our main uh, source of income comes from. Uh, but those countries must be in a, in a situation where uh, they are uh, uh, have their COVID situation under control because we don't want to have, like we used to have before, we had, um, we had closed our borders where every time there's a problem with the airline or cruise ship with people on it, whether or not they had COVID um, passengers, um, we want to avoid that at all, at all costs. Um, but along on the domestic side of the economy where the local businesses are concerned, um, as you mentioned, um, those will be done based on the conditions that we are putting together to make sure that when we do open, it will be in a phased way. Um, you know, and, and I can give an example. This doesn't mean that this is how it's going to be. Um, but of course, you want to do things that are, let's say, not indoors, but maybe partially outdoors, um, drive through, um you know delivery i think it's delivery drive through you know um outdoor type of um, businesses and and the last would certainly be businesses that will that are completely indoor you know because and 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 the amount of social distancing space so i think there's a lot that we have to start kind of almost readjusting mentally and, and even physically within the business to make sure that um we no longer if this becomes the norm we no longer can have chairs that are basically um, only two feet away as opposed to six. So I think those are um, the specific conditions covering all, or not all, well, the idea is that those conditions will be covering different industries and sectors of the economy so that we can maybe do open up in the phase way. We know how the, the phases of, of, of that opening, but also the conditions under which the, those phases will be done. Thank you, SG De Weaver. Thank you, Dr. Sack, for that question. I would now like to invite Dimitri Whitfield of the Daily Herald. You have the floor. Hi, good afternoon to the hi, good afternoon to the panel and to the people of St. Martin. My first question is to the Prime Minister. Um, given the indications that you and other members of the EOC panel have given that the curve seems to be flattening, what is your projection or prediction? as to how soon the country can be reopened internally. What are your estimates as to when this can happen? It was breaking up, Rolaika. Was that question for me? Yes, Prime Minister was. I'm assuming you didn't hear the question. Um, Dimitri, can you repeat your question, please? Uh, my apologies. Um, my question again, given the indications that you and other members of the EOC panel have given that the curve seems to be flattening what is your projection or prediction as to how soon the country can be reopened internally what are your estimate as to when this can happen okay this is exactly what we are in the process of doing now initially our shutdown was for the first three weeks we extended it for two weeks sorry we extended it by three we have been at the end of next week, we would have been shut down for five weeks. ESF six has recorded one more week, so we would have been then completely, well, not completely, shut down for six weeks with um, some um, de-escalated measures to allow for shopping, etc., on three days per week. Um, this will continue until the end of the education measures, and we weekly assess what can be added. Since we are still actively dealing with the rush on GEBE, et cetera, it is not advisable to add more to the movement on the island at this moment. Uh, we would like to get that under control, and GEBE has, um, in our EOC meeting earlier today, established that they will be putting other measures in place to ensure that, does that, that does not reoccur this week. Um, as I mentioned in my opening statements, or maybe I didn't, it's on my notes though, hardware stores and electronic stores are already carrying out deliveries as per our um, addendum. Restaurants that have agreements with um, frontliners are carrying out their deliveries as well um, and caterers, um, but we cannot allow restaurants at the moment to open. We were looking at this week 
doing allowing for the drive throughs and for deliveries, but that was determined not to be feasible at this time. So as we move through and we get an overview from the task force as to which um, entities can open with the least possible uh, contact, etc., and that it is feasible for them to execute. Because even though we have put forth that hardware stores can deliver, many of them are not delivering. So it would behoove them as well as their clients to get a delivery system in place. I know several places already had um, delivery in place or they just had a list of delivery trucks lined up outside that would execute deliveries. And I would suggest that they get on that bandwagon as soon as possible so that persons can continue to prepare for the hurricane season. Um, so we are looking at within the next two weeks in lifting measures that we can then do it in a systematic manner and that will be announced during the course of the next two weeks. If, if I may, if I may add, please. Yes, Fena. From, uh, from the public health perspective, from an ESF-6 perspective, one area that would definitely assist in this is that persons come forward. If persons come forward, are tested, are isolated, and the, the persons that they may have been in contact with are quarantined, this will increase our chances of flattening the curve even faster. So the idea is we now have the capacity, we now have the testing kits, we now have the staff, we can carry out the service, Please make use of it. Thank you, Fena, for your um, addition as well. I would now like to invite Lyndon Brown of BCN TV to pose his question. Lyndon, you have the floor. Uh, good morning again. Are you hearing me? Yes, Lyndon, we're hearing you. Continue. Uh, yes. Question to the Prime Minister. This question can the, the Mr. John from the, the police and the Prime Minister can, can answer. Those persons that have been misbehaving in the different district and jump up, um, um, Prime Minister, did these people being tested, um, seeing that there was a lot of people together? And um, also the, the commissioner, mm -hmm. commissioner of police, also, also um, can also mm -hmm. get into this. Um, those people who who constantly who constantly um um Mr. Post, Brown, can you kindly pose your question to Chief John? Yeah, posting pictures and 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 um making people looking bad because, for instance, I wasn't in this area, and these people are posting my pictures as if I'm I'm I'm, I'm a decent person. I'm I'm not in this category. So I'm asking both of them, the Prime Minister and, and the Commissioner, what stern warning do you have for these people? Thank you, Mr. Brown. Prime Minister, I'll let you begin. I think I'll let Chief John go into this. I think I've spoken to this topic uh, more than enough. And uh, Chief John did update during the week, or Minister of Justice did update during the week. But I'll pass the question to Chief John. Thank you, Prime Minister. Chief John, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, if I understand the question of uh, Mr. Brown well, um, are they being tested? I, I have no idea if they, they are tested, so maybe that's a question for ESF-6. But um, stern warning. Um, before I give a stern warning, I want to thank all of those who are finding this such a great uh, thing to do, breaking the measures and rules and posting them on Facebook, because that material is used now to find everyone who has broken the rules. So I want to thank them very much for providing the evidence for us in this all. Uh, Mr. Brown, our systems are J, um, very sophisticated, and um, even if you wasn't there or there, we will find that out. So um, you should have no worry about people posting your pictures um, to an activity that you were not present. But all those who are present uh, will be found, and we have already demonstrated that we have the capability of doing so. 
I have seen also some posts on Facebook that we are going to close a carnival that was canceled. Um, I want to say be very careful of your thoughts because we are, we, are, we are ready not only with manpower but with technology to be able now to see much more. So please adhere to the measures and um, keep us all safe. Thank you, Chief John. Thank you, Lyndon Brown, for that question. We now move on to the second and final round of questions. Bibi Shaw of SMN News, you have the floor. Um, are you hearing me, Rulaika? Yes, Bibi. All right. Um, I must state this. I did not hear half of what um, Mr. Chittick has to um, so I'm not going to go back to the question because it seems that he doesn't have a headphone and I can't hear. What I'm going to do, I'm going to direct my question to the Inspector General, Dr. Earl Bess, because um, since this outbreak, it's the first time he is on a panel. Um, Dr. Bess, um, can you tell us, as the Inspector General of St. Martin, what role is the inspectorate playing when it comes to control, conducting controls at businesses that might be violating the social distancing measures have have the department intervened has the department conducted an investigation at the supermarket where allegedly an employee was working there and passed away and can you also tell us dr best if the inspectorate is cooperating or collaborating i should say with the ministry the department of tf economic affairs to also con 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 conduct controls with the inspectors from TF when they're doing their price control. We know we are having price gouging as a, a situation. There are fines being given. And we also know that there are a lot of situations where social distancing and health measures are not being respected. Tell us exactly what the inspectorate has been doing. And if you care, you can also explain us a little bit from a medical point of view about the rapid testing that a lot of people is championing right now. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bibi. Dr. Best, you have the floor. Can you? Yes, good afternoon, uh, all viewers and listeners. Uh, if I understand Ms. Shaw, not Shaw, her question correctly, uh, what the involvement is of the inspectorate in cloud control and social distancing. That is not our task. We are not in, uh, entitled to do that. We don't have the authority that falls under the police. With regard to our other roles, uh, working together with, for example, uh, TIAT, as you questioned, yes, we do work together. Uh, we go all jointly, and if we see things that fall under their jurisdiction, we notify them about situations that we encounter. Thank you. Does that Thank answer you your that. question? Uh, Bibi, well, we are not. You. Yeah, but he asked if my question is answered, and I didn't think he understood what I'm asking. This is a pandemic, Dr. Best. What I'm asking you, there are supermarkets that are violating health measures. So I'm asking you if the inspectorate is involved in doing anything whatsoever to ensure that these measures are being respected so we can really flatten the curve. Because that's Thank the objective, you, I believe. Thank you, Bibi. Dr. Best? Yes, uh, we of course we are doing inspections in all the supermarkets that are open. We are checking upon the hygiene measures that they have to take. That is happening. And for example, yesterday some complaints came uh, came in about supermarkets that they didn't wash the cars, they didn't disinfect the cars. So we took measures there as well. So we are doing inspections in all the supermarkets. That is happening. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Best. Thank you, Bibi, for that question. We now move on to Stephen Cerulean of PJD to Radio. You have the floor. Thank you, Ms. Roach. My question is for the Fire Chief. The Prime Minister stated that um, the information as it pertains to the hurricane season will be provided next week. Fedna Arnell said that meeting will be taking place between CPS and, of course, the medical center. My question to you is, what sort of collaboration is being done to ensure that seeing the fact that we are in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, that the information as it pertains to the hurricane season 
does not clash with that of the COVID-19? Do we foresee a separate committee being put in place to ensure that the, 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 the St. Martin is at least informed differently to the information that is coming from the COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you, Stephen. Fire Chief Clyde Richardson, you have the floor. Good afternoon, Cerulean. Um, at the moment, we have um, sent um, information to all of the different ESF coordinators requesting an update on their operational plans for the hurricane season. So if any adjustments have been made for the 2020 season, um, we, will, we will try to keep separate meetings so that it does not um, interact with the COVID meetings, but at a certain point, we still have to have joint meetings to see how we will, if such a situation happen, how the different ministries will assist each other to be able to handle the situation if we should get a hurricane um, coming our direction. And it was already um, started, a discussion already started in the EOC since yesterday pertaining to that. And there will be a follow up next week on how to move forward in, with the information that we gather and how we can bet put it in place to secure that both incidents or both if the pending disaster, if a hurricane should come and the COVID situation, how best we can work towards that. So it's in discussion. I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Fire Chief Richardson. Thank you, Stephen Cerulean, for that question. Andrew Dick of TV Carib, you have the floor. Yes, uh, my question is to the Prime Minister concerning um, the extension of the, the deadline um, for one week. You said that um, prior to, you said that we would always coordinate with the French side. The French side shut down. Um, it's from now, it's going until the 11th of May. Um, has that strategy changed, Prime Minister? Thank you for that question, um, Andrew. We had a meeting with the French on Wednesday whereby they are adhering to the uh, proposal of France, which they fall under, to, to reopen on the 11th. Um, they are now, as I mentioned before, Monday coming, starting to test within their communities and will determine what, based on those results, what they will actually be doing. But they are preparing as an OCT based on their uh, upper bevel, which is President Macron. Um, I have, we do as much as we can to collaborate with the French. But of course, seeing that we do have two different constitutions, at times they have to adhere to whatever comes from above. Their situation is different um, and they know that they have not carried out any more of a mass testing than we have, but we have at least gone into our communities to find um, areas where we think people may not have been coming forward. Um, CPS is going to use the next two weeks to continue to do that. What we've done so far, we can take it as face value. Only a very small percentage. Um, Ms. Um, Arnell mentioned one person tested positive out of the 16 that were tested over, I don't know how much person she said, 1,100 persons that were approached over the last period of time. When people keep saying mass testing, when you test on a mass, you're going to get a lot of negatives, which would make your numbers look better. But it is not, it does not mean that these people are negative. The PCR testing, I'm not a professional, but I've learned over the past few weeks that the PCR testing is done in the first five days or second to fifth day of onset of symptoms. So when you start to get symptoms, if you are asymptomatic, the testing that is now being carried out will show negative whether you are carrying the gene or not. The testing that has been brought forward by MP Otley is a rapid test that is inexpensive and it is also time bound. It must be past 15 days of exposure to the virus before your body builds up some type of antibodies that can be seen. So here again, you can test people. It will give you a negative and it still will mean nothing because maybe the day after it's more visible in their system and then you have to retest again. 
So when you start doing re um, rapid testing, first of all, it has to be an authenticated test that has at least similar, um, how you say, success or accuracy as 97 or 8%, which is what we're using now. Of course, that is also time bound and we are awaiting written confirmation from RIVM that we can use these tests. If the health department cannot use these tests that have been donated, then any business owner that wants to test their employees or schools that want to test their children, I'm seeing questions coming up on the feed pertaining to that, they are free to use them, but they must understand that the health department cannot authenticate tests that have not been authenticated by our CDC, which is the RIVM. I just want the public to understand that we are not against mass testing. As I mentioned before, St. Martin will receive the antibodies testing uh, capabilities in the course of the next week, but that will only be able to tell you who has had it. It is not to identify who is having it at the moment. So um, we continue to evaluate what comes forth and based on what as a health, you don't want to open yourself for liability. Many of people are saying you can't say that you're flattening the curve if you don't do mass testing. Um, mass testing will just give you a large number of negatives and still it will only be held for a short period of time because within days, those same persons that were negative can start to show symptoms as well. So you have to continue checking and that is what CPS is doing based on the persons that they have said have come in contact with known COVID plus cases. And then they keep checking these persons over time and testing them as they become um, symptomatic. Every country up until now within our kingdom, including Aruba, Curacao, tested people based on symptoms and travel. Symptoms and travel. Now we're solely going on symptoms and we're isolating people who have been in contact with others and then once they get symptoms, they can be tested because that is the only time it will show on the test whether they are positive or not. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Andrew Dick, for that question. We now move on to Jeffrey Sapin of Island 92. You have the floor. Okay, this question is for the Prime Minister. Uh, Prime Minister, good afternoon. When, uh, when do we think that uh, we can expect the first uh, set of payments to come out from the SSRP. You know, we've made it now through the end of April. I'm willing to bet that there were a lot of people that were not paid at the end of the month. And uh, when do we expect that that first uh, first round of payments will be made to employers um, under the SSRP? The SSRP is being rolled out now that the budget has has been approved. Nothing has changed from Wednesday to today in terms of my being able to update you on that, Dr. Sock, unfortunately. But the goal would have been that we would start in the first week of May, and that remains our goal. So as soon as that is ready, the Minister of Finance will be divulging that information. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Dr. Sock, for the question. I now move on to Dimitri Wheatfield of the Daily Herald. You have the floor. Hi, good afternoon. My second question, well, my final question then, is to the Prime Minister. Uh, Madam Prime Minister, you said that more time will be granted to the elderly to make use of services, but you, uh, unless I'm mistaken, you did not specify how much more time. Can you clarify? Can you indicate how much more time will be recommended for seniors and vulnerable groups like the elderly, pregnant women, and the disabled? Thank you. We did, uh, maybe I didn't, and I'm sorry if I didn't. We have in the EOC, they had the first hour, 8 to 9 p.m., 8 to 9 a.m., my apologies. Now they will be granted 8 to 10 a.m. Um, what GEBE noted, and maybe that didn't come across based on the internet, and I'm hearing my internet is also sketchy today. Um, many people were lying up to pay their GB from two something in the morning. The first question I'm asking is how is that possible with the lockdown in effect and not being lifted until 6 a.m. in the morning? So it is very, um, I'm asking the general public, do not go out too early. 8 to 10 a.m. is for the seniors. Then, you know, if maybe by 9.30, the others can start to line up and 
GEBE and all of the rest, put a, a, a system in place that limits the number of persons that would be at the location at one time. So I'm looking forward to that adjusted schedule from GEBE to alleviate that problem and that any other persons or businesses that are um, open for service ensure that you limit the number of persons. It is your responsibility as an entity to ensure that you limit the number of persons that are there. But the seniors will be there from 8 to 10 a.m. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Dimitri, for that question. We now move to the final question. Lyndon Brown of BCN TV, you have the floor. Good morning again. Um, question to Fana Arundel, Arundel. You mentioned that um, there are 76 um, confirmed cases. Um, would you say we we are balancing? We, we are balancing off. Um, Fana, can you give us um, your take on, on this matter? Thank you for that question, Mr. Brown. Unfortunately, I cannot. I cannot. And I can't repeat more. I can't repeat it anymore. I just have to keep requesting the public to please come forward. I cannot say that we've reached our peak. I can say that the amount of has definitely has definitely dropped. But I'm not sure if the amount of pos positives have dropped because of the fact that we are now testing locally and that those tests and so our turnaround time is, is shorter. But at this point in time, we cannot say that we've reached our peak until the public comes forward, comes to a 911, calls 914, go to their family physicians and honestly indicate that they're feeling experiencing signs and symptoms until we have tested everyone that is experiencing signs and symptoms can we say we have reached our peak and we have to Thank request persons to continue practicing social distancing if we continue to practice social distancing and we continue to cover our faces with face masks we can secure that if there is someone that may be infected and may be passing passing on this illness to another, that it will not happen because of, 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 of us or the public then behaving in the manner that it's that it's required to curb this to curb this to flatten this curve even more. So practice social distancing, practice proper hygiene and cough and sneezing etiquette. Cover your face with a, with, a, with a face mask properly and please contact your family physician or 914 in the event you're experiencing any signs and symptoms so that you can be tested. Thank you, Ms. Arnell, for your response. I would like to invite Andrew Dick, who would like to have some clarification provided. Andrew, you have the floor. Andrew? Okay, seems like Andrew may have left the meeting. This does bring us to the end of our question and answer session. The, qu the floor is now closed. I would now like to invite uh, the Prime Minister, I stand corrected, I would like to invite our EOC members to provide their Closing remarks, I would like to begin with uh, Fena, Head of Public Health. Ms. Fena do you have the floor? Thank you, Ralaika. I believe that everything that, that ESF6 would like to bring forward has been brought forward. I cannot reiterate anymore how important it is that the public works along with us, that we, that we get the people to come forward and indicate whether or not they are experiencing signs and symptoms. We need persons in the public to continue with their, with their face mask use. Uh, their, we need persons to continue their practicing social distancing. I am so happy that EOC has approved that persons can now be physically active by, by walking between certain hours that we can ensure that persons who are at home can still be physically active as a way to ensure that they remain healthy. Please make use of this opportunity because we all know physical activity is very important. And I think that's it.
Thank you. Thank, thank you, Fena, for your closing remarks. I would now like to invite ESF seven member and head of community development, family and humanitarian affairs, uh, Ms. Chantal George Kunevelt. Chantal, you have the floor. If you can kindly unmute your mic, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. I would like to take this opportunity to once again encourage the companies to join together to provide, to, to send in donations so that we will be able to make more food packages, which will be, which we can then use to assist the most vulnerable in our communities. One example of um, one of the community councils, which I find is very well, and I want to share with the other community councils and our community minded persons is the Dutch Quarter Community Council. Um, they approach the three four, sorry, supermarkets in Dutch Quarter, asking them for a donation. And what these supermarkets did, they donated 50 Gilder vouchers. These vouchers then will make a, 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 make a big difference in a lot of families' lives. So what, I'm, what I would like to do is encourage other community councils to approach their, the supermarkets in their respective districts in order to put in a request as such. Should there be any supermarket owners or business owners that would like to have more information as it pertains to the contact number for the community councils and our community-minded um, persons, I will recommend them to go to the government website where the contact information is listed. Or they can send an email to me at Chantal, C H A N T A L E, dot Kroeneveld, G R O E N E V E L D T, at St. Martin Gov, dot art. Thank you once again. Together we will get over this. Together we will be able to provide for our most vulnerable in our communities. Have a good afternoon. Thank you so much, Mrs. George Hunneveld, for your closing remarks. I would now like to invite ESF1 coordinator, Mr. Kenrick Chittick, to provide you with his closing remarks. Mr. Chittick, you have the floor. Thank you, Ms. Roach. I will let the inform the public that as of next week, we'll be open for the senior citizens and frontliners. And the following week, we'll have a plan in place for the rest of the public. We are also encouraging those persons who have the option to pay online to please sign up and do so. It is more convenient. It also reduces the line. And for the public as well, too, there's no need to rush to GP office for six in the morning. We will be open. We're not disconnecting anyone. So rest assured, if your bill is not paid on time, you will not be disconnected. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chitik, for your closing remarks. I would now like to invite ESF. 10 Coordinator and Secretary General of the Ministry of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport and Telecommunication, Mr. Miguel De Weaver. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Uh, in my closing remarks, I'd just like to mention a couple of things that we want to encourage the businesses to continue the, pro the, the proper practices of sanitizing and san having sanitization, um, sanitizing equipment for their customers uh, to sanitize their, their, their carts, et cetera, in the supermarkets. Uh, we want to encourage the public to you know, um, spread out, go to the supermarket that's closest to you. Um, uh, there are also many different times of the day that you can visit the supermarket, not always in the morning, because as the Prime Minister correctly pointed out, uh, in the morning there's usually the rush, but usually at midday it is a lot more quieter. Um, try to spread out as much as possible. It helps us all. There's a big difference between the, the, the large supermarkets and the smaller ones. Sometimes even the medium ones, they're, they're they're, they're very much empty. So I think, you know, you have a lot of different options and times and, and choices of locations that you can visit um, that will protect you and yourself. Um, I encourage and, and I second the, the, the recommendation from Mr. Chittick that, you know, in general use, um, try to get more online payments, um, whether it's for your banking purposes, whether it's for your paying of your bills of GB, of Telem, or UTS, whatever it is, use more. Trust me, you will see that when you use it and you get familiar with it, it is actually um, very easy and you would want to have to stand in those lines, not in the sun, um, and you would always then prefer to do things online. 
and the last thing I know is not within my area of competence, but I think, um, you know, we, we want to encourage and second the, the motion of, of, of uh, the discussion, the point from Fenner, which is that, you know, encourage the persons um, to get tested. Uh, you know, we don't want to stigmatize persons who have it because, as you see, the, the Prime Minister of Britain, of the United Kingdom, um, was, was infected with, with Corona. Um, so it's, you know, it, 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 it knows no borders. Um, there's nothing to be shamed about. Um, and, and we want to make sure to help give those who need help um, and, and let them know that um, it's okay um, and to get tested and, and you will be taken care of. The earlier you can get tested and taken care of, the better and your chances are for living. So there's nothing to be ashamed about. Be, um, uh, how you say, encourage those that you even think uh, may be sick to get tested or to be checked out. So um, the better we can control it, the better and the faster we can get back to our new sense of normalcy. And I, I would leave it there. Thanks. Thank you, SG De Weaver, for your closing remarks. I would like to re-invite Mrs. Chantal George Cunaval to provide with the public with a few more tips. Chantal, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. I just received a few messages of persons asking how can they get a um, food package. You can get a food package by visiting the government website and filling out the social impact form. In the event that you do not have an Android device or internet connection at home, please contact your um, president of the community council and perhaps he or she may assist you with filling out this form or you can call 711. We have a team of back office um, staff members that will be able to assist you. Remember, we would like to assist those that are in need. However, um, it's your responsibility as well to assist us by filling out the social impact form digitally or calling 711. Thank you very much, Rilaika. Thank you, Mrs. George Hunovelt. I would now like to invite ESF 5 Coordinator, Chief of Police, Carl John. Thank you, Rolaika. Um, I want to emphasize once more the use of the waivers and uh, ask everyone to please have these documents in place when um, moving on the island. Um, waiver E. Uh, a and B is to move internally on the Dutch side of the island. And we will see the one signed by the prefer is for you who lives on the Dutch side to go to the French side. And the one signed by the prime minister, the chief of police, is for French citizens who live on the French side to move to the Dutch side. Uh, with, it said, with this said, I would like um, to advise all to keep movement as essential as we are defeating the purpose. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you, Chief John, for your closing remarks. I would now like to invite Dr. Earl Best, Inspector General of the Ministry of VSA, to address you. Dr. Best. Yes, uh, listeners, viewers, uh, most important in this uh, episode of uh, COVID-19 is to re remain, keep your social distancing and hand washing hygiene, keep practicing that. Even if you are going into the stage of a uh, exit, those things will remain a priority besides other measures to be taken. They are basic measures that need to be kept in place. So keep doing that, and uh, that's that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Best. I would now like to invite the National Disaster Coordinator and Fire Chief Clive Richardson. Good afternoon again, listeners, and um, thank you, Ms. Roach. I also um, second Dr. Best's recommendations that um, to keep practicing social distancing and also proper hygiene. I would also like to leave the population know that we are in discussions pertaining to preparations for the hurricane season. And as soon as we have finalized talks and a decision has been made, the public will be informed on how we will address the 
custom of them being able to go out and preparing for the hurricane season. So that is forthcoming. Thank you, Ms. Roach, and thank you, listeners. Thank you, Fire Chief Clive Richardson. I would now like to invite the Honorable Prime Minister of St. Martin, Silvera Jacobs, to provide you with her closing remarks. Prime Minister, you have the floor. Thank you, Rolaika. Thank you to all the panelists here today. Um, I was waiting and I was realizing that we did have quite a large panel today. I want to thank everyone for their contributions and hoping that they have further enlightened the general public about all the actions being taken, why they need to be taken, and understanding why we need to extend a little further to ensure that the curve is being flattened. We are seeing the signs, but as uh, ESF 6 has indicated, it must be a reliable um, downturn of events, and um, she even stated today that she needs to see several days go by with no new cases before we can really say that it is flattening. We have had that um, it is less and the hospital has ascertained that. And I'd like to reiterate some of the statements made by um, the last two speakers, our Dr. Best, as well as coordinator of Nash uh, Disasters, Mr. Richardson, that keeping good hygiene and the social distancing, as well as covering your face uh, with masks. If all of us, we put out some information on mask use out there. And if all are wearing masks, there's a smaller chance to spread who may still have it and not know, even if they are asymptomatic. I see a lot of questions about asymptomatic people coming up. And again, it is very difficult to find um, positive asymptomatic persons, but we will continue to do as much testing as we can, but you cannot force test people. We need persons to come forward and be tested. So I encourage, along with um, Fen Arnell, all those who are fearful, there is nothing to fear, there's no fear of deportation, etc. come out, be tested so we could get our real numbers and then understand how best to reopen our country. We are making plans and preparations for such, but it will require us having the good information before we can do so. Follow our government radio station 107.9 for official information, statements, and news updates or visit government website at www.stmartingov.org forward slash coronavirus and our Facebook page, Government of St. Martin. I'd like to take this time to thank our frontliners and essential workers, especially those who work behind the scenes who we don't see in uniform necessarily, but who are diligently very much needed in this COVID-19 pandemic, especially the cleaners, the persons um, picking up our garbage and keeping our St. Martin clean. I encourage you to take this time to partake in activities, those of you safe at home and with no need to go out to work at this time. Spend quality time with your family, Help yourself and your family by picking up a book, learning something new, reflect, plan ahead for the coming months, stay off the roads as much as possible, unless for emergency movement, as mentioned earlier, and anyone who uses a public place during this emergency, stay at least the two meters away from other persons in your vicinity. That includes when you go to pay a bill. I have heard some horror stories of especially seniors arguing with the police and the GEBE workers who are trying to enforce the social distancing regulations. Please, it is for your own good. And for those also refusing to wear masks in public, you can be refused service if you do so. The EOC continues to assess and execute the plans that have been made, of course, adjusting as necessary based on our population's behavior. I want to thank all those who have been complying with the measures. I think a majority, a vast majority have been doing so. And the extension is not a punishment based on some small group's behavior. It is simply to allow us to have a reliable downward trend in our numbers. And that has to be for a considerable time for us to trust it. Get public compliance trend with that as well. Thank you. And to strengthen our modeling to be able to monitor in case there is a second wave. I would like to thank all of the entrepreneurs and individuals who have donated and or volunteered thus far and ask you to continue to do so. We have come up with a great community um, give back scheme in that those who have within the community 
will be organizing to do a donation to the residents within your community and then a pickup. So a kind of a drop off pickup situation, which you will learn more about in the coming week. I would like to thank again all of you who have been faithful and positive because positive outweighs the negative. Faith outweighs fear and I have faith that the people of St. Martin working together will see us through this difficult time. The SSRP is on the way and more information on that is upcoming in the next week as well as more measures as we continue with the next two weeks of this state of emergency. I thank you for your attention. May God bless all the people of St. Martin as we go through this together as one family. Thank you Prime Minister for your closing remarks. Honorable Prime Minister, EOC members, members of the media, radio listeners and online viewers, this does bring us to the end of the live press conference for today, Friday, May 1st, 2020. As mentioned by the Prime Minister, for rebroadcast, tune into St. Martin Cable TV, St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM, the official Facebook page of the Government of St. Martin, and the YouTube channel Government of St. Martin. For video on demand, be sure to log in to the official government's website at stmartingov.org. On behalf of the Department of Communication and the Government of St. Martin, I'm Rolaika Roach and wishing you a pleasant day further and weekend ahead. Mm -hmm.